What's happening, guys? This is the Grandmaster of Faster, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. In the last episode, we went in and explored Mermaid's Cave, the sixth dungeon, in both the past and the present, and we made some progress there. In this episode, we are going to finish up Mermaid's Cave. And the place is still as run down as ever. Okay, first things first, we got to uh, get our seed shooter out in order to uh, take these candle heads out. <laughs> and nice. I love, that, I love that it lit as the seed was ricocheting. And now those candle heads are toast! <laughs> and oh, ooh! we have a new enemy, Giant Blade Traps. As you can see, these guys are much bigger than the uh, than the uh, normal blade traps, but they also move a lot slower. So you are easily faster than they are. Okay, is there anything over here? No. I need to get my switch hook out because I want to switch places. All right, I might as well kill that water tech tight. Okay, now you might remember this room being a dead end in the previous video, but since we lit those torches in the past, it thereby affected the present, and now we can get the compass for the Mermaid's Cave of the Present. And if we check the map, we can see that there are three chests left for us to obtain. Okay, if we head down here, we've got some keys that we need to destroy. And we want to hop over these platforms. Take care not to fall down, because there are spikes at the bottom. And let's face it, no one wants to uh, run... No one wants to fall off and get spiked and... And no one wants to get squished between a rock and a hard place, either. Ah, already the Let's Play curse is affecting me. Okay, so... Whoa, 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 whoa! Ew, blue whiz robes. Yeah, I... We all know how annoying these guys are. And yeah, they take three hits, whereas the other two varieties take two. And- Oh, dude! Oh, that Beemo scared me a little bit. But then who wouldn't get scared encountering a Beemos? Anyway, in here we have ten rupees. Pretty minor, uh, pretty minor treasure. But, uh, the real prize is in the room above us. So we want to unlock this block and run past that Gibdo, and we are now in a very annoying room. Basically, we have to pull one of these levers and either chests, either the chest or ropes will pop out. And expect for ropes to pop out a lot. Okay. Come on, I believe, uh, four ropes, yes, four ropes appear when you, uh, I guess, choose the incorrect lever. Okay. Please let this be the right one. Thank you! And in here, we get the boss key. Alright. So... What happens when you, uh, activate this owl statue? Test your luck. Although... Something just hit me for a moment. It took me... I had to battle four waves of ropes. When I pulled the lever for the fifth time, the chest appeared. And that happened in the previous recordings that I did of this, uh, run-through. I wonder, is that a s is the fact that you have to battle four waves of ropes and the fact that you get the chest after you pull the lever the fifth time a set value? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't come down to luck. Oh well, food for thought. In any case, we have the boss key but, uh, the boss is actually in the past, uh, version of the dungeon. And if we check the map, we can see that we have two, um, 
We have two uh, ch treasure chests left, and one of them, spoiler alert, is in fact the dungeon item. Okay, am I going the right way? No, I am not going the right way. Follow the watery trail, and it shall lead you on the path of enlightenment. Or in this case, the path to the dungeon item. Anyway, once again we have this uh, crystal switch that will fill in tiles so that we don't get, uh, so that we don't fall down the endless void. Okay. Alright, we want to avoid getting grabbed by those floor masters because, let's face it, no one likes the fact that the floor masters try and get to grips with you, if you know what I mean. Alright, so, we have some more turnstiles. Those are always fun. Note my sarcastic tone. Whoa! Okay. Alright, first I want to take care of you, since you're annoying. And as for you, I don't like Gibdo's much better. Alright, so... We have to uh, do a bit of looping around here. In order to get to that chest on the other side. Okay, now we're... now we're cooking. Ah. I don't really know what else I can talk about. School has started, and I do like my classes, and it was good to see some of my old friends in college. Alright, here's a small key. And, uh, I'm gonna try and get involved a lot in a lot more extracurricular activities, uh, this year. Because... That was my biggest uh, problem in high school. I wasn't invo involved in enough activities. Granted, 90% of those activities involved athletics, and, uh, yeah. For those, of, for those who know me, let's just say that I am not what you would call primed for sports. Unless it's eSports, then I, I'm in with a fighting chance. Alright, so, we want to uh, loop around yet again in or so that we can get to the right side of the room. And we want to stay on this ledge, because if we fall down, then we'll have to go all the way back. And avoid these freaking Gibdos. Hmm. Gotta feel sorry for the Gibdos, and sorry for the undead creatures in general. But anyway, let us unlock the door to find the mini-boss. I am Vyr, Varan's loyal henchman. I heard someone was trying to stop Varan, so I came here. But it's just some kid. Fine, I can handle you. Alright, remember Vyr was a regular enemy in Link's Awakening, but now he's been upgraded to mini-boss status. Uh, Vyr is pretty easy, honestly. Basically, he's just going to float around and shoot energy balls at you. But if you get too close to him, he'll dash away. So, you sort of have to wait until he comes in close and then slash him with the sword. And now he's gonna... Alright. The uh, blue energy balls are shot straight. Shot, shot straight at you. But when he fires a red one, that's going to be a home... That, that energy shot is going to be a homing one. So, the good news is, is that you can block every one of his attacks by swinging your sword. It's really not a very difficult fight. It can just go... It, it can just go on a bit because... He doesn't, uh... The more you hit him, the less likely he will charge at you. Okay... I'm actually doing pretty well so far. There we go! Got him! I believe he... He really doesn't take that many hits, which is good. Otherwise, this battle would last an eternity. And, uh, no other weapon can da And the sword is the only thing that can damage him, so... You can't use your seed shooter on him, and I... Wow, I actually got him! And after he's taken enough hits, he'll split into two bats. You just need to destroy those, and he's gone. Ouch! I paid for my overconfidence, but I'll report this to Varan. Gar-har-har! -har. 
So he retreats like the coward he is, and he leaves behind a teleporter. Now, to see what he was guarding. Okay, we've got some whiz robes here. And we want to get our bombs. Now, we want to throw them at just the right time. And that wasn't the right time. Nor was that. Okay, this can be a little bit tricky to get the timing down. Case in point. Oh, come on! There we go! Finally! Alright. Use the switch hook. Walk up to the chest. And obtain... The Mermaid Suit! Now you can swim in deep waters. Press the D-pad to swim, the B button to dive, and the A button to use items. With the mermaid suit, we can now swim in the deep water that we couldn't tread before. Not only that, but we've got everything in the present version of the, of the uh, mermaid's cave. So we don't need to be here anymore. Yes, with the mermaid suit, we can now, um, tread the deep, dark waters and obtain a ring from this little grotto here. Yeah, in essence, the mermaid suit is an upgrade to the Zora's flippers, but, um, oh, Maple, let's see if she's got anything. Besides a flying vacuum cleaner, obviously. Oh, but there's no way I can get that ring. That's gonna... That, that kind of sucks. Alright, I'll collect all these rupees and then I'll travel back to the past. One complaint I have about the mer... There is one complaint I have about the mermaid suit, though. And that is you have to repeatedly press the button in the direction that you're going. Whereas with the Zora's flippers, you could just hold it down. I really don't know why they did that, but, um, I'm not a big fan of it. Okay. Now that we are in the past version of the Mermaid's Cave, we want to uh, head in this direction, first of all. And we want to, yet again, defeat these Candleheads. Oh, 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 jeez. Ah. And wow, I'm already down to five hearts. That's just sad. Oh, never mind, spoke too soon, I've got six. But anyway, now that we have the mermaid suit, we can uh, swim into the dar dark waters below. I just said that, why am I repeating myself? And we have a new enemy, Barry. Yes, the same, uh, the same, uh, monsters that appeared in, uh, or or Ocarina of Time, excuse me. They will electrocute themselves occasionally, so be careful of that. And once you slash them once, they'll split into two smaller jellyfish. And, uh, they will, then you can defeat them like that. Okay, this video is going pretty well. I am up to, uh, I'm up to almost 14 minutes, but, um... You know, I'm going to complete the Mermaid's Cave in this video, no questions asked. Okay. Whoa! More jellyfish. Oh, and strong currents. And obviously you'll want to avoid those holes. And, whoa! Is Nintendo logic anyone? Statues breathing fireballs underwater? But anyway, we've got a key, which is all well and good. I just want to check to see if I didn't leave anything behind. No, I didn't. I guess you could say we're at the tail end of the mermaid cave. Or if we were talking about Link's Awakening, we would be at the tail cave. <laughs> ah, Zelda humor, you gotta love it. Okay, time for us to head back up and progress through the deeper regions, regions of the Mermaid's Cave. And is it me, or does the music in this dungeon sound very Pokémon-esque? I 
don't know why it reminds me of Pokemon, honestly. It just does. Alright, I think that's all we have to do in this area of the dungeon, so let us go up. And, okay, yeah, you'll want to, we'll want to head to the uh, north end of the mermaid's cave. Just want to make sure I'm going the right way. Yes, I want to go left, and then I want to go up. But first, yep, the exact same cave puzzle that we did in the previous video. Yeah, sorry if I'm checking my map so much. I just want to be absolutely sure that uh, I don't miss anything. And... Why did I do that? Why on Furore's given earth did I do that? <sighs> well, needless to say, this video is going to take even longer then. <sighs> oh, look at the bright side. At least I'll be done with, uh, at least I'll be done with this dungeon. Alright. Let us head up, up, and away. Oh, more, uh, bombable rocks and more whiz rubs and more wisps and more floor masters! Oh, God, get away from me! Die! Die, 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 die! Can't say that to the wisps because they're invincible. Okay, now we are in the room that we were in previously. Which is neat, which is safe to say that we're in the previous room that we talked about previously. I'll stop saying the word previous now. Okay. So, let us dive down into another underwater section. And, uh, whoa, what's that right there? Yeah, these guys, they're gonna shoot arrows if you get too close to them. So we want to head to the right and destroy these ropes. Because that statue, I believe, will launch fireballs at you as long as they're still in here. Okay. And I do know for a fact that snakes can swim, but uh, this is kind of ridiculous. I don't know if they can survive underwater. Well, yes, they can. That would be called an eel. Anyway. Okay, I'm not a marine biologist. Let's leave marine biology to the experts. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to uh, get the uh, diamonds on these, on these uh, yellow tiles here. Pretty much as simple as tile puzzles get. Alright, let's switch you. Let's bring you up here. And there we go. Alright, one diamond left. By the way, I really like the water effects on the screen. I think that's really, really clever, especially by Game Boy Color standards. It's a shame that these, uh, it, it's a shame that the two Oracle games are overlooked, because you can definitely tell they, uh, Nintendo and Capcom really put their uh, heart and soul into these games, and it definitely shows, in my opinion. Okay, that is it for this underwater section. We got the key that we needed. So let us head in this room. We want to unlock that block here. And uh, we got to get those flippers in the right position. So you want to step on them once. This is a pressure switch, by the way. And you want to use the cane of Samaria. And you want those levers to be in that position. Because... When you shoot the, when you use your seed shooter, you can hit the switch, which will create a bridge to the boss door. All right, I also want my uh, seed shooter ready. Okay, this is Octogon. Yeah, really creative name on their part. But anyway, that white section of his is solid. You can't damage him. So you have to wait until he turns around and shoots a rock at you, and then you can 
hit his, uh, well, never mind. All right. So I just want to avoid him for a second, because he has the advantage in the water. Also, while he's underwater, he'll shoot those bubbles at you that will hold you in place and will give him enough time to ram you, like he did right there. And eventually he will surface. Now, what you want to do is you'll want to get in a position which you can hit his red section, because his red section is his weak point. And also take care of the rock he shoots at you. Oh, wait, I actually almost forgot. You're not completely helpless in the water. It's just that he's quite a bit faster. You can actually fire scent seeds at him while he's underwater, and that will damage him even further. Uh, he won't shoot rocks at you while you are underwater, though, but he does move a lot faster. Just avoid those bubbles that he spits out. He does take quite a few hits before he goes down, and those pots right there will, uh... Those pots right there will, uh... Wait a minute, what am I doing? I can just use the, uh... I can just equip the seed shooter to my A button and the sword to my B button. Whoa! And there we go! That's Octogon! Not a challenging boss in the slightest. But anyway, now that the boss has been defeated, let us go and obtain the Sixth Essence. You got the Bereft Peak, also known as the Lonely Peak, an essence of time. It is a proud, lonely spirit that remains stalwart, even in trying times. I just cannot believe that we already have our Sixth Essence. This project is going by really, really quickly. But anyway, what does the Maku Tree have to say? Link, I have great news! Queen Ambi has just left the palace! Now is your chance! This may be your only opportunity to save Nehru! Well, you heard the Maku Tree, we gotta go to the palace and rescue our good friend Nehru! And so, next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages, we are going to go over to Ambi's Palace and in order to try and save Nehru. See you guys next time!